Hey everyone. In this video, I wanted to explore some of the aspects of storage performance. I often talk about things like IOPS and throughput and latency in many of my videos. And I think there's been a general question is, well, some people don't really understand the difference between what those things actually are. So in this video, I wanna super quickly just go through really the difference between IOPS, throughput, and latency. Now, if we start off thinking about some storage target. Now, for the analogy, I'm gonna talk about liquids and pouring liquids in. So my target, I could really think about, could be a barrel of some kind. So it's just some barrel. And if you think about storage, the capacity is fairly simple to understand. The capacity is, well, how much can this actually store? How much liquid could I pour in? How many bits of data could I store? Now, there are features like deduplication. Hey, if I find blocks with the same data, I'll just store it once. There's things like compression. Hey, I will can optimize the way this particular data is stored to store it in a small amount of space. So that might affect the amount of data I can store in the capacity but overall, I can think of the capacity is the amount of stuff that I can store. So that's, that's pretty simple. Now, I do want to point out, a barrel is not the best example in that with a barrel, we just pour stuff in and it all mixes together. When I think of storage, it's really discrete areas, blocks, so that we can be then very granular about writing to particular areas of the barrel and reading back particular areas. But you get the general idea. So let's then think about IOPS and throughput. So IOPS, input, output, operations per second. So read and write, how many read and write operations can I perform in a second? So if I was thinking about that, if I was thinking about this bucket analogy, how many scoops from a source or people handing me glasses could I pour into that barrel in a second? So this motion pouring in, that's the number of operations, be they maybe scooping out read operations or write operations, I'm pouring into it. So how many discrete operations do I allow into this barrel maybe? How many different hands and glasses can fit over it to get the liquid actually pouring in? So how many pours could I do a second? So that's IOPS. How many operations can be performed against this target in a second? Be it writes or reads from that. So that might be fairly easy to understand and realize when we talk about storage, there's limits both on my target, but also maybe on the source. I may only support a certain number of IOPS from whatever source system where the application is running that's triggering these. And I have to think of both of those different dimensions, both IOPS and throughput and, and the latency, because I might have multiple different apps going to the same storage. So there's, yes, I have to think about what are the limits of maybe my target, but also then what are the limits of the sources of these operations. So an, an operation, a read or a write. I always have many of those can I do in a second. Now then think the size of those operations will affect the throughput. So that's the amount of data. So IOPS, we think of a number per second. Throughput might be megabytes per second. Because think of those operations. If I'm using this really tiny glass, and let's say I can do 10 pours a second, well, that's 10 times the sort of volume of this glass, which really is not very much. But if my operation, my glass was bigger, and I did the same 10 pours, that's obviously a much bigger amount of liquid is gonna flow. So my throughput for that same number of operations would be significantly more. And that's the same when we think about storage. We have an operation, that operation can be of different sizes. Now, different types of workload, be it a database operates in page sizes, it could be a hypervisor, it could be a regular file system. And then there's file systems and disk drivers and the physical disk itself, if it's a whole hard disk drive, then there's sectors. If it's an SSD, no moving parts, then we have pages. But we think about we perform operations of a certain size. So that can give us the throughput. And there'll be a maximum throughput, how much liquid could actually pour into this thing in any one time. And that will be a function of, well, what are the size of those operations? If I'm doing 
10 operations a second, it's a very little operation, it's really not gonna be very much throughput. But that same number of IOPS, the operations per second, if it's a much bigger operation, I get a much, much bigger throughput. So throughput is really a function of the IOPS times the size of that operation. So if I think about IOPS times the size of the operation, well, that's gonna give me my throughput. And that could be megabytes per second. So if my IOPS was 2000 and my operation was eight kilobytes, well, then it's 2000 times eight kilobytes. So we get that, that 16 megabytes per second. So that would be my throughput. So that starts to make sense. It's all about, hey, the number of operations I'm performing and then the size of the operation, that will be the throughput. And many storage devices will have a maximum of both of those. It can accept a certain number of operations and then it can, op and it can accept a certain throughput. And generally what we're gonna work out is, well, it's generally pretty consistent for our workload. A database will have fairly consistent, normally it's fairly large operation sizes, where some other workload may have very small operation sizes. So depending on the size of the operation, we might care more about IOPS, because we're doing lots of very, very small operations, or we might care more about the throughput, because it's not so much a huge number of operations, but they're very, very large. So it's the throughput that we really, really care about. Now, there are other things that go on behind the scenes. There's caching that can change how this works on a real storage. But there's another factor that might be more important if I'm not maxing out the performance, if I'm not maxing out the IOPS, I'm not maxing out the throughput. Think about the glass scenario for a second. Imagine I'm Tom Cruise, I'm not Tom Cruise, but I wanted to make cocktails. So I'm standing over here and I wanna make the tasty beverage I make and I might need five different glasses filled up from that barrel, five different read operations. Well, maybe I hand the glass to someone else who goes and fills it, and they're gonna fill it from the barrel. This is where we think the barrel is compartmentalized so it can get different things, whiskey, vodka, orange juice. I have no idea what goes in a cocktail. But if I'm Tom Cruise and I only have one glass at a time, I give it to the person, well, how far is that person away from the barrel? So I have to walk over to the barrel, scoop it, come back, give it to Tom Cruise and he pours it in the blender and then gives the glass back. And then they go and get the next segment from the barrel, now it's whiskey, walks it back and he pours it in. So these are all sequential. So if I have five different pieces of information, five different parts of the drink, really what's gonna affect the performance is not the number of operations that can be performed, it's not the throughput, I'm not stressing that the performance of the end customer who's asking for their cocktail is how long does it take to go and get each part of the drink? So if I was doing that sequentially, that latency, that would actually be the biggest factor in the performance. Now latency will also affect the throughput initially, because if I have to go and start filling it up, well, there's a delay before it starts filling. But once I reach a certain point, it's backlogged and it's still filling, it's flowing through. But the individual transactions, if I'm a transactional system, I actually probably do care more about this latency. I wanna make that latency as small as possible. I wanna be as close to the barrel as I possibly can be. So that would be if I'm very chatty. Hey, Tom Cruise only has one glass and they have to give it to someone to go and walk, fetch that part, give it to them. So if the latency was a second, well, if that could be reduced to 0.1 second and there's five of those operations, that makes a huge difference to the overall performance. Now the other option, ideally, is Tom Cruise has five glasses and he lays out the five glasses and says, these are the five things I need in these five glasses, go and get them all and then give them back to me. So then I'm only hitting the latency once. So you can start to think about, hey, the latency will have a huge effect on the performance, but how I write my application will really impact, will how many times do I hit that latency? If I can write my application so that I have multiple requests simultaneously, so yes, they all hit the latency, but it's only once, that's far better than, hey, I do an operation, then another operation, then another operation. That's gonna really 
boost that latency and really impact my performance. This is why when we actually go back to computers and stop thinking about cocktails, we wanna think about having our compute and our storage as close together. Because in a computer world, let's say the cloud, for example, there are compute racks and there are storage racks. Now on the compute rack, there's a temporary local storage which has super low latency because it's basically in the same node as the VM, as the compute resource. But then our managed disks, our blobs, all of those are actually in different clusters. Now it's still very close, but that's why you see latencies. Now it's actually traveling over a wire to get to where the storage is, to do the operation and then report back. Any distance is gonna add some latency to that. That's why if I have my application on-prem and the database was in the cloud, wow, I mean that, that's now a really big distance. That could be 20 milliseconds of latency for every operation. So if that was that single glass and it was very chatty, that's gonna be a terrible performance. So I'd wanna write my application to have lots of glasses and actually doing those in parallel. So I'm reducing the impact of that latency. Maybe there's caching, maybe there's things I could do to improve that. But it's why we try and really think of latency as well. So that's what I wanted to cover, but just understand that IOPS and throughput may not be the most important thing. IOPS, hey, how many operations, be it, um, writes or reads can I do in a second? We realize the size of those operations will be the throughput. If it's a very small operation, hey, the throughput's gonna be fairly small. But if I'm not maxing out either the source or the destination, what's more likely gonna impact my application is that latency. What is the time it takes to perform that operation? Because that operation may be, hey, the glass is over here, I have to pick it up, walk to the barrel, pour it in, walk back, put the glass down so then they can fill it with the next liquid. That's actually a far bigger factor on how quickly I can fill the barrel than how many pours I can do if there's only one glass. And um, what is the opening of the barrel? It's, it's bandwidth, so to speak. So just understand that that's how those things come to play and think of those elements. You may not be able to plan these out. If you're doing a new workload, you may just need to observe initially, look at the metrics around my IOPS and my throughput. Um, there are latencies described the various types of storage subsystems you may see, and then scale those numbers out to try and work out well, what am I actually gonna need in a production. So I hope that helped. Um, until next video, take care.